Hi everyone. We are Neo Carbon and we upgrade industries to negative emissions. But uh, before I jump into this and spare you uh, one more company presentation, um, I'll just start by talking about myself a little bit so you can take a breather. So I'm French, as they mentioned, but I've also lived here for almost 10 years, so it's a massive honor to be here at Slush, especially since my first Slush was in 2012. And you can see uh, time has been kind on me. But it's really amazing that I get to share with you what I've been doing up to since then. So thank you for the Slush team uh, to let me have be on stage today. I've also lived 10 years in Finland, as many of you uh, have heard. Um, and I'm just curious, like show of hands, who has ever been in Finland outside of Slush, actually? Because it's a great country. Well, uh, very few, but it's actually right now the weather is perfect for Slush. But in reality, there's also actual great weather in Finland. Uh, you can see here, so this is me. Uh, just this summer, and you can imagine 25 degrees, weeks and weeks on ends, blue sky nonstop, and you can hop from island to island, and this is just great. So I highly encourage you guys to come to Finland during summer. They've only been, only, rather, only, only been keeping being greater. But is that really actually a good thing? I, you know, not really. Like, the rest of the world is getting to burn. Finland is getting just hotter and hotter, which means greater summer. But is it really worth it? That I'm not really sure of. So why do we have this? Well, as you've just heard at length before, so thank you, Curate, for introducing all my problems. Uh, we have a climate crisis, and CO2 removal is unavoidable. We need to remove billions of tons, again, as you've just heard, and it's really a big endeavor. At New Carbon, we try to do this also by solving customer pains, so it's more attractive also and more scalable as a business uh, than just trying to solve the climate. Everybody cares about climate, but really, um, People are also have other priorities, so to say, so it's really on top of the budget. And so we try to approach that a bit more business driven. So how do we do this? Uh, the main thing is we do direct air capture. So it's a technology that removes CO2 directly from the air directly. And it's today really plagued with a few big problems, both because of an immature technology and an immature market. First on the technology, most of our competitors rely on technologies that take a lot of energy and specifically a lot of renewable energy that drives very high costs to unrealistic amounts in our opinion. And even that technology has never been really tried out of the lab and when it has, it has been proven quite unreliable. For us, we uh, basically solve both of these and also the market issues, which are that all of this is powered by completely voluntary removal markets. That's typically the only viable business model for removal today. And 100% of that is reliant on people voluntarily buying removal credits. And all of this also part of a very unclear uh, value chain. So a mentality of, yeah, you know, some, I'm doing the capture thing today, and somebody else will figure out how to store it, how to transport it. It's all going to work out. And we think that's, you know, on top of the technical risk, on top of the market risk, adding value chain risk is actually, um, you know, something we should solve as well. So obviously at Neo Carbon, we do all of this. How? On the technology side, first of all, we have a very uh, seamless approach, which is to leverage as much as possible from the existing world. We leverage existing infrastructure. We retrofit industrial sites. So that means that, first and foremost, we can basically install our installation without building everything from scratch. We don't have to build roads. We don't have to build water, electricity, or even parking lots as our competitors do in the middle of nowhere. And that drastically, obviously, removes uh, CapEx. Why we do it? Because the main driver of OPEX for direct air capture is actually energy. So all these industries, virtually every plant, every factory, has a lot of energy in the form of heat that they can't use, which is called waste heat. And we can use that directly to reduce our OPEX. So we can be very much more uh, fast to deploy and much more cost efficient, both on the CapEx and OPEX side. All of this in a modular design, meaning that we can basically be scalable on the manufacturing side while still uh, being adaptable to any space and stack containers and, and so on. On the market side, as I mentioned, we really like to approach customers very customer-centric. So again, not trying to be like, hey, do you want my credits? Hey, do you want my credits? But more like, OK, what's your problem that we can solve? And one of our current customers, so we already have actually um, worked with a couple of customers, the biggest of which is a cooling water chemistry company, one of the largest in the world. They have tens of billions of revenue per year. And 
by definition, they're including water, so they need very high alkaline water for their purposes. And when they want to release that out, they need to put acids in there to make it back to neutral pH. For us today, it's made with very dirty approaches, typically sulfuric acid, which is very dangerous to handle. And from our side, we can be like, hey guys, let us use CO2 instead of your dirty acids. It's also an acid, it works the same way, but that's just a much cleaner and nicer solution for you all. And almost as a side note for us, we get to store CO2 permanently in water. Same thing with the cement and concrete. We can basically accelerate the curing time, so the production time of, of concrete, meaning that with the same plant, they can produce more. Obviously, something that they really care about deeply. And again, as a side note, NeoCarbon gets to store the CO2 permanently in concrete. Uh, again, some companies today presented the mineralization solution. So if you've been paying attention, you know all about that already. And both of these basically are very scalable because one industrial site can lead to hundreds of thousands of tons of CO2 removed per year based on their heat. So we really can take out CO2 from the air very efficiently, solving a customer problem, and of course, very cost effectively, as I mentioned. Today, we are already on our third iteration. We started early 2022 in Berlin. We, in less than a year, built our first machine, which you can see on the left. It's sitting in our office in Berlin. Uh, and it was, of course, a great milestone. But the most important one is that we have now had our second demonstrator running at the customer, which I finally can announce today publicly for the first time, is called Kurita Waters. They're, as I said, one of the largest Japanese player in cooling water, so they're number three in the world. And basically with them, we have now connected our uh, system to their waste heat, um, meaning that we have validated the vision of near carbon fully and that we can operate using waste heat of industries without disrupting their processes. And of course, that was the first revenue for us. So we already have over half a million of revenue that are not linked to credits uh, thanks to these projects. We are now then able to learn from these projects, thousands of hours of operating hours in the, in the, in the real life, and build our patented reactor and our best-in-class technology, which will lead to our third design you can see on the right. And that also leads to much more scalable use cases, where you can stack a few, as you've seen already, to get 500 tons, or even much more beyond to get tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands of tons removed per year at a single site. So to recap, we really have at NeoCarbon, with our proven deck technology, a scalable business model. So we solve on the technological side the fact that we are powered mostly by cheap and abundant energy that is currently being wasted. This has been proven once again at our customer with over a thousand hours of operating time. And we're working on what we call the most mature technology track. So we are working with heat, which is the same branch as, for example, Climeworks, the leaders in the market. We took everything they did right, and we improved on everything they did wrong and patented that. Uh, hence, we could file five patents on our best-in-class DAC reactor. And on the market side, as I said, uh, we approach customer to create value from waste, which means that we can basically uh, be valuable to them and to the climate at the same time, leading to this uh, half a million over of revenue. On the final value chain, as you heard, a lot of our approach is to go to industrial sites where there is a storage already logical for the customer and for us, so we can basically seamlessly scale both uh, storage and utilization without having a lot of uncertainty on the, on the stakeholders that are involved. The team is Rene, my CEO, and myself, the CTO. Uh, he, Rene just had a baby, so that's why he's not here today. But um, basically, we are both engineers that have a huge drive for climate, as was kindly pointed out during my introduction. And we are now backed by a team of also very intrinsically motivated FTEs that are also uh, driven, driving the change of uh, the climate crisis. As entrepreneurs and as serial entrepreneurs, we always also ask from day one, who can help us do this better? So this is why our advisor board is one of the most important assets we've leveraged. And you can see that on the DAC side, for example, we've been working closely with Dr. Carlos Hertel, who used to be the previous CTO of Climeworks. Again, the leader in the industry by far. And he is, of course, a world-leading DAC expert. On the technology side, our reactor, the technology we've developed uh, to patent and improve significantly on the performance of today is based on membranes. And here again, we are working with Professor Dr. Matthias Ulbricht at one of the leading universities in Germany on the topic. On the hardware side, Christian Follmann, uh, you probably all know, uh, one of the most famous scale-up uh, in hardware in Germany, the CEO of C1 Green. 
And finally, um, Dr. Anna von der Schönelberg on the business side, she used also to work at Climeworks. It's a very small industry, so we tapped into the experts where we can find them. Uh, but she led the partnerships uh, there, so obviously helping us defining our business models in a realistic and uh, sensible way. Today I'm also announcing that Based on all of this, we have dearest our tech, we have protected it, we have proven that we have customer interest with customer traction and revenue, and we have operating expertise by running a module at large scale over thousands of hours, autonomously, remotely, with all kinds of weather, rain and sun, all seasons, uh, something that I'm very proud personally because virtually no other DAX startup except the very old ones have done. We can now scale, and this is why the Series A comes in. So we will scale operations by replicating those early successes uh, and build, building multiple installation with larger uh, installations of different verticals. That means also scaling revenue, obviously, so bigger and more profitable projects. And finally, to power all of this, we need to move away from the demonstrators that you've seen to more uh, serial manufactured products so we can start the stacking and the Lego game. Uh, all of this also leads us to internationalization. Until very recently, our next market would have been the United States. Today, for obvious reasons, we're a little bit pausing and playing the wait-and-see game of how that's going to look like. But we've already identified that, for example, Denmark would be a great second market because their government is so bullish and so positive about the need for CDR and so active about it. We're already trusted by four leading VC firms. Uh, you probably know these logos. I, I also wanted to name them because that's thanks to them that I get to be on stage today, so fulfilling my uh, dream of attending Slush for the 10th time, finally on stage. Um, and yes, we really want uh, to have you join the making net zero emissions a reality. So if you're interested in the Series A or you want to talk to me, uh, I'll be at the Fossils to Future drinks later on tonight. And otherwise, here's my contact, and we'd love to have you on board. Thank you very much.